let's talk about management, management, management. Okay. For the management, because irritable bowel syndrome is a recurrent condition and it may go on for a long time. What you've got to do as a doctor is to establish a good doctor-patient relationship because of the need for continuity of care. That's number one. Good doctor-patient relationship. Number two, if mild and intermittent symptoms, the recommendation is not using pharmacologic therapy. Let me say it again. Establish a good relationship with the patient. Number two, if the patient is having mild or intermittent symptoms, the recommendation is not using pharmacologic therapy for initial management. Rather, use lifestyle and dietary modification. And what is the dietary modification you want to encourage? You want to exclude what you call the FODMAP diet. And the FODMAP diet, the F-O-D-M-A-P-S, it basically stands for fermentable, oligo, di and monosaccharides and polyols. So when you have FODMAP, 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 and I'm going to give you some examples of FODMAP diet. It basically stands for fermentable, that's the F, oligo, that is the O, di, that is the D, monosaccharides and polyols. These are the, the foods you want to avoid. You also want, may want to exclude lactose because we said that lactose intolerance is a differential and lactose itself can also make a patient with irritable bowel syndrome, you know, have worsening symptoms. And you also want to exclude gluten, gluten use. And after you've done all this, you want to trial psyllium, especially if the patient's symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome is predominantly constipation. Okay? And you want to reassure the patient that, hey, you are not dying. It's a benign condition. You know, it's not cancer. But that is after you've ruled out all those things. Okay, so I have a question. We've done that before, but I just want someone to remind me, doctor, which labs will you do to rule out other conditions, you know, which may present with irritable bowel syndrome so that you can fearlessly encourage the patient that, look, it is not cancer. You are encouraged. You can, you know, we can put in some lifestyle changes and things can make better. Can somebody just quickly rattle those investigations for me? First is what CBC, right? We talked about then after CBC that we want to fetal calprotectin and fetal lactoferrin um, test. And we said if we don't have that, then what investigation will you do? C reactive protein, right? And then we also said that you're going to do blood, um, stool test for GABA. And then you do CLAC serology, right? And then you do age appropriate screening for colorectal cancer. And if the patient has constipation, you will do an abdominal x ray. Yay! Abdominal x ray, right? So if you're able to rattle this, for example, can you imagine you are dealing with a case of irritable bowel syndrome, even in your NAC exam, because the NAC also covers. The same objectives, and then you know you have a like I present to you post encounter. Hey, what 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 investigations will you do? CBC, fecal calprotectin, fecal lactoferrin. If I don't have that, I'm going to do my CBC protein. I'm going to request you know Gardia uh, Lambia test with the the, the the stool. I'm going to do celiac serology. I'm going to do abdominal X-ray. The patient has constipation. What do you think the examiner will do? So not just be smiling, right? The Q1 is an exam which can be beaten if we learn according to the objectives. And that is my that is my mission. I want everybody to get into the system so that we can help to lift the Canadian healthcare system up, right? It helps to take care of us, so we also want to give back to it. So another thing you also want to encourage lifestyle modification like exercise, you know, increase hydration. Encourage exercise because exercise also helps with bowel habits, especially for those who have the constipation type. Avoid caffeine and limit fructose and citrus. So those are some of the examples of the FODMAP diets, right? Fructose and citrus. So when when I mentioned the 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 FODMAP, as I said, it was fermentable oligo diamonosaccharides and uh, polyols. Okay, these foods are poorly absorbed carbohydrates that can cause fermentation and gas in the colon. Okay, these foods we're talking about, and some of them are lact lactose, fructans, and fructose. Okay, so doctors, please, you've got to master these concepts very, very well. Now, you're going to use pharmacologic therapy based 
on the predominant symptoms. So can somebody help me? What are the predominant symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome we talked about? It's a spectrum. We said it can be this or it can be that or it can be alternating or if the person can even have normal bowel habits alternating with that. So what are those two extremes? It can be what? Constipation. Constipation and Constipation, what else? Diarrhea. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or, or, or mixed. Mix. Mix as well. Right. Yeah. So, you know, not everybody present with irritable bowel syndrome will present with the constipation form. And not everyone will present with the diarrhea form. And some may even present the abdominal pain form. So, what are the treatment options in constipation predominant irritable bowel syndrome? Number one, first step, give psyllium. Because psyllium is like a bulking agent, right? So, it will encourage the gastrocolic reflux. So that the reflex, sorry so that the food can move through. If psyllium fails, use polyethylene glycol. If psyllium fails, use polyethylene glycol. Step three, trial lubriprostone and linaclotide if the osmotic laxatives fail. So in constipation, I'm going to start with psyllium if psyllium fails, I'll go with polyethylene glycol. If that, that, that also fails, then I'll go with lubiproston or linaclotide. Constipation. So don't also confuse, you know, the two. Don't go and give linaclotide to somebody who has diarrhea. Don't do that. Okay, so we've learned the medications for constipation. What about the medications for the diarrhea one? You can give antidiarrheals like, you know, uh, lupiramide. Bile acid sequestrants are second line. And you can also trial rifaximin. 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 You can trial rifaximin. Bile acid sequestrants are second line therapy and antidiarrheals. And other options you want to consider can be low FODMAP diet. Antispasmodics because it's like, you know, as the patient is having a diarrhea, things are just moving on quick, 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 and the patient is in trouble. Patient is in pain, so you can give antispasmodics. And you can also give tricyclic antidepressants. Cy tricyclic antidepressants. Then, we we'll go with the, the, the abdominal pain predominant ones. You can you give antispasmodics and antidepressants. Antispasmodics and antidepressants as well. Okay. Always remember. Always remember this. A common comorbidity with irritable bowel syndrome is fibromyalgia. Always remember that. Don't forget it, please. Always remember that a common comorbidity that is associated with irritable bowel syndrome is fibromyalgia. Okay. 